The Commodore 64, now in a home family pack. A family pack containing the world's number one selling home computer. Saboteur is a stealth action adventure game originally created by Clive Townsend for the ZX Spectrum and then ported to the Commodore 64 by Branko Spolgerich and published by Jurel Software in 1986. It was critically praised at the time, earning its fair share of high scores and accolades. The concept is simple, at least at first. Playing as a highly skilled mercenary dressed as a ninja, you've been hired to infiltrate an enemy security building disguised as a warehouse and steal a disc containing the names of all the rebel leaders. You start off in the sea, approaching the building on a rubber dinghy, as is the ninja way, and must get in, steal the disc and leave via a helicopter on the roof before time runs out. There were three different endings to Saboteur. You can either leave in the helicopter without retrieving the disc, which is basically failure. You can leave with the disc, or you can go for the best ending, replacing the disc with a bomb hidden elsewhere in the building and escaping before it blows the warehouse to matchsticks. It's a basic idea then, and the game is similarly simplistic as a result. Exploring the warehouse for the first few times will be an exercise in trial and error. There's no in-game mapping system, so unless you sit there with a pen and paper, you're going to have to just learn and memorise where each room is. Everything appeared to stay in the same place with each playthrough, meaning once you know the location of the bomb, the disc and the helicopter, you can have the game beaten in a couple of minutes. Well, sort of. Of course, there is always a catch, and in this case the headquarters are heavily protected by armed guards and watchdogs, as well as an automatic defence system, which monitors your position in a room and then starts zapping you with a laser. Your mission, as mentioned, begins with you in a rubber dinghy moored just off a small pier, leading to one of the warehouse entrances. Clad totally in SAS attire, the obligatory black jumpsuit and boot polish all over your face, you are armed with only a throwing star. Trained to a very high degree in various martial arts, you can also partake in a bit of physical aggro, rather than just lobbing the odd throwing star or brick about. You have a choice too, a killer punch or a ninja style drop kick are both equally deadly to any guard you may find. The security complex is split into three sections. The first is the warehouse front, containing the helicopter and primary defence force. If you get down into the sewers, then you can link up to the underground train, taking you into the first part of the computer centre. From here, another underground train has to be found to get you into the second computer centre. This is where the disc and the bomb are held. Once the disc has been picked up and the bomb primed, a countdown starts, showing the remaining time in which to reach the helicopter. A quick dash back through the sewers and train systems is required, unless you like having yourself smeared all over the walls. Whilst bashing your way through various adversaries, your progress is charted via two screens. The main screen shows a side view of the room you're in. As well as running and fighting, you can also perform a nifty tuck jump for bouncing over chasms and gaps. Using the ladders, platforms or steps provided, you travel around the complex of colour-coded levels. The bottom quarter of the screen is used to display your status. Only one object can be held at a time, the object you're holding appearing in a window on the left-hand corner of the status area, while objects close by are shown in the window to the right side of the screen. An energy bar along the bottom of the screen shows how your energy level is furring. Standing about doing nothing for a while, however, allows ebbing energy force to return. I enjoy the game because the nine different skill levels ensure even the most novice player has a chance to complete the game. What used to always make me wonder was that, for a seemingly stealthy operation, why did the saboteur clank around the place like he was wearing cast iron boots? For a ZX Spectrum conversion, it's a very decent game. I also thought the music on the title screen was great too. 
So, to finalise this video, I'd like to give this game a massive thumbs up and recommend you get this one loaded up on your Commodore 64. Thanks for watching guys, classic this one, right? Hit the like button and let me know what you thought of Saboteur in the comment section. If you can't get enough of this stealthy legend, then fret not, there was a sequel. However this time, it doesn't feature our protagonistic male ninja extraordinaire, but his sister, the Avenging Angel. Keep your eyes open for that one. Hopefully you're enjoying the nostalgia, and if so, definitely ensure that you follow me on this epic journey by subscribing to the channel to be notified of all upcoming videos. Don't worry though, there's plenty on the channel playlists and more coming daily. In fact, there's one coming up right now. Hopefully, I'll see you there. Until then, bye for now.